The NFF, which is the owner of the NPFL, issued the license to organize and regulate the top tier league to the league management company for the purpose of organizing and promoting the league to meet global technical and commercial standards. It was also established to oversee the professional football leagues in Nigeria with a national membership organizational structure for professional football through which the LMC can facilitate financial success, stability and development of professional football clubs, administer and regulate the professional game and promote the ethos of uh, arguably uh, the world's most popular sports. Now, the dispute resolution provisions under the LMC rules can be found in the Section D of the NPFL framework and rules, given the confusion of labor-related issues ranging from non-payment of salaries and uh, sundry packages uh, between players and their teams. And it's a little wonder then that the rules stipulate that all labor-related disputes with the club over unfulfilled contract agreement or conditions of service shall in the first instance be submitted to the Arbitration and Dispute Resolution Committee. Steve, um, this dispute resolution and the LMC rules, for me, I feel like most of the things I get to read are not the things that I see implemented in the league. Well, thank you, Doka. Um, first of all, we have to understand the history behind this provision. Mm -hmm. The League Management Company of Nigeria, for all intents and purposes, is an associated competition or associated member of the NFF. Mm -hmm. So being an associated member, they are also expected, they are also expected to comply with Article 59 of the FIFA statutes, mm -hmm. which requires mandatory submission to arbitration. In relation to all disputes. Mm. Now, when you, the question you now ask yourself, is this provision actually um, in strict compliance with the provisions of Article 59? Mm. The answer is an obvious no. Because implied in Article 59 of the FIFA statute is an obligation on the member associations, which includes the NFF and the LMC, to put up a dispute resolution framework mm. Now, it, it is not enough to uh, make reference to the NFF Arbitration Committee. When was the last time the NFF Arbitration Committee sat? Mm -hmm. Where are the decisions of the NFF Arbitration Committee? Who are the members of the NFF Arbitration Committee? Mm -hmm. These are the questions that bother me when these issues come up. Now, you look at the provision in itself. It says uh, any dispute, any trade dispute, which means what's the, the, what is contemplated under the LMC rules is purely employment-related issues. Mm. What about issues with intermediaries, agents? What about issues between two clubs, probably on transfers? So these are the, these are the lacunae in that particular provision that I am hoping the LMC would look at their counterparts in, in, the, in the other uh, <coughs> member associations of FIFA mm. to borrow relief from what they are doing. Now, I'll take you to England, uh, which is the obvious example. Yeah. The FA rules in England, they have an innovative dispute resolution, resolution mechanism. It mm. is called the FA Rule K. That okay. FA Rule K contemplates disputes arising among all participants. The key word there is all participants okay. in the league. All participants encompasses member associations. It encompasses the league board itself. It encompasses clubs, players. Um, intermediaries, that's mm. talking about agents, players, agents, and managers. Yeah. Then you now talk about um, match officials. Mm -hmm. So everybody is brought under that framework. Now, the way it works is you submit your disputes to the arbitral tribunal. Okay. The arbitral tribunal will be constituted. They have, they have, they have a commission that sees to the constitution of the arbitral tribunal. Mm. When it is finally set up, parties come before that tribunal to hear their matters. Mm. Now, I want to also go back to what arbitration itself simply means. Yes. Arbitration as a dispute resolution mechanism simply means that the parties have some level of autonomy mm. in appointment of the arbitrators, in laying down the ground rules for the dispute resolution mechanism. Mm. Usually, the rules under the FA rule K provide for the procedural um, framework that the parties are expected to conform to when submitting the matter to arbitration. Mm. Now, what informed the use of arbitration as a dispute resolution mechanism in sports? It's because of the specialist nature of sports. Mm -hmm. 
So, again, parties are given that independence to constitute the tribunal to choose to choose whatever rule or platform they intend to settle the dispute. That is what you have in Rule K. Now, I'll take you to a recent case, a, a case that was decided in 2018, okay. which demonstrates clearly the need to have this sort of dispute resolution framework. Mm -hmm. Mercato Sports Company Limited and Everton Football Club Limited. Mm -hmm. Mercato uh, acted as an intermediary in the transfer of a player to Everton Football Club. Now, Mercato and uh, Mackay, Mackay is the second claimant in that case. Okay. Both of them sued Everton after uh, assisting Everton to enter into the employment contract with the player. Their issue was that Everton um, did not compensate them mm. for bringing about the employment contract. So more like a breach? Correct. In agreement. So, so they, went to, they went to court and Everton took an objection. Never, Everton insisted that both parties are entitled to submit the dispute to Rule K arbitration. That is mm. not supposed to go to the ordinary court. court. Now, Mercato opposed it on the grounds that, no, that I am not bound, I am not a registered intermediary with the FA. Now, under the English uh, system, every agent, every intermediary of a player is mm. required to register. Okay. And you are given an intermediary registration number. So it now transpired that in the course of the proceedings, Mercato, Mercato's invoice was tendered in evidence to show that there was actually an FA intermediary registration number that was given to Mercato. Mm. So on that basis, the court now held that, oh, that the parties are bound to submit the dispute to FA Ruke arbitration, yeah. and therefore that the matter should be stayed. Now, before then, the, 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 the issue was now on the issue of multi, multilateral contracts, that the vertical contract and horizontal contract. What is a vertical contract? Now, I'll use an example of the LMC. A vertical contract is where clubs enter into an agreement with the regulatory body. Okay. That they will be bound by the decisions, they will be bound by the procedures of that body. Mm -hmm. That is a vertical contract. Now, a horizontal contract is a kind of contract that arises from participation mm -hmm. in that arrangement. Now, which simply means that an external party who ordinarily is not contracted to another, a member of that system, is now brought into that framework and now requires the person to submit to the dispute resolution mechanism. Yeah. Now, what happened in Mercato? The court was of the view that there's a vertical contract between Mercato and Everton on the one hand, mm -hmm. and then there's a horizontal contract between Mercato and, uh, Mercato and, and, Mercato and Everton. Everton. So, horizontal, a vertical contract between Mercato and the FA. Okay. So, then Mercato and Everton have a horizontal contract in the sense that both parties, even though they are not directly involved, there, there's no direct contract, no direct relationship between them, that the law must imply an obligation between the two of them to submit to the dispute resolution mechanism under mm -hmm. FA rule K. Okay. So uh, you come back to the LMC rules. There's nothing like that. So what it simply means is that if there's a dispute between an intermediary and uh, he's, he's a principal, that is a player. Yeah. There's no dispute resolution mechanism between them. So what probably both of them would do is to go and slog it out in court. Yeah. So this goes against the purport and intent of uh, the <coughs> section D of the, the LMC rules now, and Article 59. Yeah. Of the now, talking about uh, the framework rules, let's, uh, let me read, read out um, what the framework rules says about this in uh, section D. Now, number one, any official or player of a club who intends to declare a trade dispute with a club over unfulfilled contract agreement or conditions of service shall in, in the first instance give a 30 days notice to the club management stating grounds of dispute. Now, um, um, a copy of the notice, that's number two, a copy of the notice shall be sent to the LMC for its intervention within the 30-day period. Now, number three, if at the expiration of the 30-day period, the dispute has not been resolved, 
um, the player or official may refer the matter to the arbitration committee of uh, NFF for adjudication. Now, uh, actually, which the slides can actually show. So as we're reading this, you get to understand what we are talking about. Now, number four says, decisions of the arbitration committee shall be final and binding on all parties concerned. Number five, failure by any club to comply with any decision of the arbitration committee may cause the club to be expelled from the league. Now, number six says that where a club fails to comply with any decision or arbitral award within a stipulated period, the LMC shall have the power to deduct from or withhold monies accruing to such club for the purpose of settling the debt. Um, do you, would you want to react to that? Yes. The interesting thing about the LMC framework rules is that they make provisions for a lot of things, but they do not enforce those those things, those provisions. So they make provisions for, so section D of the framework rules have made provisions for how a club and a player can resolve their disputes. Mm -hmm. Now the first thing to note in that provision is that it's only provided for how a club, how a player can resolve his dispute with the club. Mm -hmm. Now there's no part of that um, provision that says a club should also follow this route to resolve a dispute. So just like what Mr. Steve said, there's no provision that's to cover for other um, participants mm. to resolve their disputes. So we have uh, a provision for how a player can resolve his dispute. So now a player is supposed to give the club's management 30 days notice, yeah. stipulating the uh, grounds of the dispute. Now, within th those 30 days, the player is now supposed to take a copy of that notice to LMC mm. for implementation. So now, after the expiration, at the expiration of the 30 days, if um, um, nothing is done on it, the player can now uh, proceed to take the the matter. The matter, yes. To the matter is taken to the um, uh, arbitration the committee, okay. yes, of the LMC. So now, first of the arbitration committee, to my to my knowledge, they haven't sat since I think maybe 20, 2017. Okay. So that already takes away the. The the availability of a of a of a of a uh, framework, framework yeah, situation for redress mm. for the player. Imagine you having uh, framework rules, and then the committee that we're so, that's supposed to undo the redress, that's supposed to that's supposed to look at the um, dispute and help resolve the dispute mm. has not has not sat for almost two years. Mm. So now it, it takes away the. The essence, the whole essence of resolution of disputes. Now, after this um, this process, there's a part of it that says uh, appeals from the. It says the the arbitration committee is actually final, mm -hmm. right? Now there are there are situations where I can tell you categorically there are situations where players have not been able to settle their disputes with their club management for years, and the clubs have not. Uh, up, uh, nice. Yes, they have not uh, implemented the decisions of the arbitration. That's even in situations where the arbitration committee actually sat mm -hmm. and, and you know sat through the dispute. So there are clubs, there are clubs that have not even implemented it till now for over for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Now you know you know provides for another appeals committee. If you go further down, provides for an appeal committee yeah. and says that you know uh, disputes can also be taken to the appeals committee yeah. for review. Yes. So now there's a provision that says you can only approach the appeals committee. Uh, why you want to approach the appeals committee? Rather, you have to pay a deposit of five hundred thousand naira mm. for before the appeal can actually be be, be, heard. be, be, be heard. Yes, and then uh, the the five hundred thousand naira will only be refunded to the appellant where his appeal is upheld. Okay. So it's already it's 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 first of all a lot of imagine if you are taking a dispute to the arbitration committee on uh, arrears of salary. Okay. So what that means basically is you, the player probably doesn't have any money. Mm. So now the player sits through the arbitration committee, it sits through the, the, the hearing of the dispute, uh, a decision is made as not in his favor, and he feels like, okay, he should appeal. Now you tell him that on that particular, um, on that particular dispute that is not in his favor, that he's seeking arrears of salary, you ask him to pay 500,000. Mm. Now he goes to the appeals committee, he looks for the 500,000, he goes to the appeals committee, the, the, the dispute is heard, but it's not in his favor. So he also he, loses, he loses the 500,000. 500, wow. So, and that's even in a situation where the, the, the framework is actually being opened. That's a situation where the system works. Mm. The system doesn't work. True. Now, um, Steve, she talked about the 500,000. What if a player, say for example, I'm a player for a particular football club and um, I take my club to the arbitration committee and I lose that appeal? 
in Nigeria, let me use the local parlance, there's something called um, um, the okay, sentiments. Are you saying that, um, do, you, do you think sentiments will come to play? Would the player still be in favorable position with that football club? Can he still play for that football club? Or would they just put him on the sideline saying that this one is a Judas yeah, to, right to the team? Well, um, I think that, is, that informs the reason why many of them don't take up these issues. Exactly. You have players who have been owed salaries, areas of probably over three, four months. Exactly. And they are keeping quiet about it. Now, you ask yourself, okay, what are, what, what are the pros and cons of actually taking this step to challenge do they this even, issue? Do they even know what the framework says? Uh, that is something I cannot say mm. from here. But uh, I am hoping many of them will be watching this program to actually be educated, to see that, yes, that they have this right to mm. challenge some of these infractions. Because, uh, once again, I'm going to uh, criticize this provision. Because what the LMC probably has assumed, the function the LMC has assumed in this issue is the function of a mediator. Mm. Somebody trying to say, okay, you people come and settle this issue. Usually what happens before the LMC, when the LMC is notified of some of these trade disputes, yeah. is that it will, the LMC will call both parties and say, oh, okay, what is the issue? The club will say, oh, this player, uh, maybe two, two, three months ago, travel to go and do trials without informing the club, the club. that is stand amount to absconding from his duty. Mm. And the player now says his own and say, oh, before that, you are owing me three months salary. Mm. What the LMC will do is, okay, you people need to settle this issue. Uh, you are being owed three months salary. Probably uh, you should just accept two months or one month, one month. so that you can go back. Exactly. exactly. Yes. So you can go back <laughs> to work. So, it is usually not binding until mm. they go to arbitration. Yes. Now, you can't go to arbitration when the framework is not there. When, where is the panel? Now, another example I want us to, to, to look at is the NERC, the Nigeria Electric, Electric Regulatory Commission. Commission. Now, that is the regulatory body for electricity in Nigeria. Mm. The NERC has a similar administrative framework that allows them to undertake administrative, set up administrative tribunals for the resolution of such disputes. And now, you go to the LMC, the, the NERC, NERC website, you will see decisions, you see petitions submitted to the NERC, you see all the reasons, yeah. everything explicitly well described. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, but you come back here, <laughs> you come to the LMC, there's nothing like that. <laughs> so it, it's actually a question of whether we can develop that political will yeah. to put some of these things in place because in place. the regulations are there. It's just for us to implement them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that the players will now be able to uh, be educated more and enlightened more on their rights. It is something you have to wake up and demand for your rights. Mm. So that is it basically. Very true. I'm um, talking about uh, the dispute resolution and of course what the league management company says about it. Look, uh, a case study of um, um, the framework rules and regulation for the Nigerian Professional Football League.